So this video is review for the DeWalt finishing nailer. It does anything from 32mm to 63mm brad nails into wood. Here I've just got a set of 50mm brads. Um, in order to load them into it, you just pull, pull this catch down and then drop the nails into the bottom. So once you put the nails into the bottom, you've got this, this sprung piece here metal piece that pushes your nails up so you've always got them in there. Now you've got this small window here which enables you to actually see how long the nails are that you've got in there. So if you've got the 63s in there you'll be able to see nail all the way back there. If you've just got the 32s in you'll only be able to see it in this front window. This is a 20 degree version. I think they also do a straight version but the benefit of having the magazine at a 20 degree angle means it's easier to get into smaller spaces. So I've just got the five amp hour battery in there, but of course it's the standard DeWalt, so you can put any anything in there. You have an option to change from single fire mode down here to bump fire mode. Personally, I like the single fire mode, so once you push it up against something, okay, with this, this piece here, so inside here it's a flywheel which is powering up, ready to smash down on a nail, once you squeeze the trigger of course, but you can squeeze it and nothing happens unless you're pushed up against something with this end piece here. A couple of useful features. You've got this setting here, this wheel, which moves back and forth this piece here. It enables you to set the depth of nail you want. So it's almost like a uh, power setting. So that if you're using shorter nails, they're not getting forced in really far. And if you're using longer ones, you haven't got nails sticking out of the end uh, because you really don't want to be able to go around with a punch and bash them in afterwards. If, you know, if you're buying a premium tool, you don't want to be spending more time. So you've got a small arrow here which gives you a bit of an indication of how deep it's likely to go. And that what that actually does is it moves forward this sprung piece back and forth. So you've got more or less travel distance for the nail when it comes out of here and goes into the wood. Personally, I find I tend to do like an experimental one first. So if I've got an off cut or something of the piece of wood that I'm going to be putting on with this, I'll do a test piece on the off cut and see actually have I got this, this set up correctly. So you don't be sinking the nails too far in or having them not go far enough in. Battery life, um, battery life is really good. The, you know, get through plenty of nails and don't notice the battery go down, the battery doesn't die. Which hi highly recommended tool, you've got a useful hook on the side here so you can be hooking them onto your tool belt. All padded around the top here so when you put the gun down you've actually got something to lean it on so it can sit nicely on the floor. Weight is very lightweight so you know not as light as your equivalent gas powered one but still you'd be absolutely no problems using this all day. Blockages are quite easily fixed so on the top here you've got a piece that lifts up that enables you to get to where the nails come through. So if you've got one that's stuck in there, bent, something like that, you can get to that whole area really easily. No tools required either. And then to put it back, just push that back down and you're ready to go again. So it shoots 16 gauge nails or 1.6 mil, pretty standard brad size. I personally don't tend to use these as a more of a structural fixing. It's more a fixing what in addition to glue or some kind of adhesive. So the brad nail is holding the thing in place whilst the glue goes off. Typical uses for me are skirting board, beading, and anything like that, kind of finishing woodwork. Also seen people put flooring down with this, so if you're doing tongue groove boards and you want to do a secret nailing through the kind of the tongue or the groove of the board, then this is the, the tool for you. So I bought a mixed box of these Pro Series nails, and these are 32mm up to 63mm, so the full range that the DeWalt gun does really useful to have. Depending on the kind of job you're doing, you won't know what, what nail will be required. And these are the 20 degree angle. So when you're buying these, make sure that you are buying the 20 degree angled ones. Now, one of my favorite benefits of the DeWalt finishing nailer is the, the how quiet it is. Like it's an incredibly quiet tool to use. There's absolutely no need for ear defenders, anything like that, which on some of the cheaper ones, like the Titan mains powered one, I find it too loud to be using without ear defenders. In terms of drawbacks of this, I haven't really found any. Sometimes getting the nails in the first place, it can be a little bit stiffer and you just have to drag them through with your finger, but really not a big issue. This piece potentially could be better made. There's a bit of a bit of clay in this, so if you pull this, they can just fall out quite easily. 
if you were to catch that, perhaps something that could be improved, but not a big deal. And in terms of that friction point I was saying, the nails have a bit of a habit of getting stuck towards the bottom here, but there is actually a small metal piece which creates a bit of friction, so I guess it's the, so that nails don't just fall out when that does happen. No other complaints really, it's the standard DeWalt grip, the uh, XR tools, brushless, got some lights down here as well LED is always useful so you can see what you're doing so no, no complaints excellent tool I just bought the naked version because I already had the DeWalt battery platform so I've already got the batteries so here I've got 32 mil 16 gauge brads and just an example just so you can see really the profile of the wood versus the nail size and given that it'll get sunk into the wood a bit anyway you can see more than half of the nail it's going to end up in the, the plywood underneath. Obviously, depending on what you're going into and what's underneath would depend on how long a nail you want to choose. So, got the 32mm brads loaded in. You can see there that's actually not sunk the nail in particularly well. So, I'm just going to, because I've gone for a shorter nail, back the setting off a bit. So we're on the much lower end. So now it should be sinking the nail in a lot further. That one there, we've gone quite a bit deeper into it. And very little damage done. So just a close up on these. You can see there's very little damage being done to the wood itself. So there's really not much filling to do at all. Even on this rounded MDF here, there's really not a lot of damage to be filling. This one, where well, I hadn't changed the setting on the nail, hasn't gone all the way in, so that is slightly, slightly proud of the surface there. But overall, good fixing, you know, that's not, not going anywhere easily. If you're actually fitting architrave, my personal preference is a bit of adhesive underneath, and then these nails are really just holding it until the adhesive has gone off. And here we've got a much smaller piece of beading. So again, gonna use the 32 mil brads to just hold that on. Just gonna do it just on the side of this. So you can see there, this first one here, I wasn't in a great place for that, but it hasn't damaged the wood, hasn't blown out the side or anything like that. This one here, the depth wasn't right, and this one, the depth is pretty good, very easily filled, but as you can see, there's just very little damage to the wood. This one could easily just be punched in, and then very easy to fill. There really is minimal damage, and you can see this one, how close it was to the edge of the piece of wood and it still hasn't been damaged. So it does come up, not too much effort, but you can see it hasn't blown out the back, nails it nicely through the wood, 